5 p.m. recap. Thank you for subscribing to our channel. Today is Tuesday, December 8, 2020. Fox report. As relations with China worsen, Australia fears U.S. abandonment under Biden admin. With Donald Trump's presidency quickly coming to an end, countries like Australia, who find themselves at odds with an increasingly assertive China, fear a Biden administration will leave them high and dry. John Blacksland, professor of international security and intelligence studies at the Australian National University, told Fox News that the U.S. relationship with Australia is fundamentally important to Australia's confidence in its ability to speak its mind on the international stage, and admitted, there's always been in Australia a bit of a fear of abandonment when it comes to the United States. Deutsche Well Report. Coronavirus Digest. Trump orders priority vaccine access for U.S. U.S. President Donald Trump signed an executive order on Tuesday, which his administration says will ensure that Americans receive priority access to the new coronavirus vaccines procured by the U.S. government before they are made available to other nations. A senior administration official confirmed that the vaccine will be given for free to U.S. citizens. No American will have to pay a penny out of his or her pocket, the official told reporters on Monday. CNN report. A no-deal Brexit will destroy 300,000 jobs and push up food prices. As Brexit talks enter the final stretch, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson must decide, does he cling to his definition of sovereignty, or does he set aside ideology, and perhaps his own pride, to safeguard jobs and the economy? With days left to reach a trade deal with the European Union, the stakes have never been higher. But talks are once again at risk of collapsing over three sticking points, fishing rights, government aid for companies and how disputes are settled. Al Jazeera report. Key deadline marks beginning of end of Trump election challenges. In Donald Trump's continued quixotic effort to overturn the results of the presidential election, Tuesday marks the first date in which the finality of Joe Biden's electoral college victory becomes a legal reality. According to U.S. law, Tuesday is the safe harbor deadline for individual state governors to make their state's slate of electors official, in writing, to the archivist of the United States, the final step in the election process before the Electoral College meets on December 14. BBC report. Fort Hood, soldiers fired and suspended after Vanessa Guillen probe. An investigation into problems at the base was launched following the killing of soldier Vanessa Guillen this year. Army Secretary Ryan McCarthy said the issues at Fort Hood are directly related to leadership failures. The Army has also ordered a new policy on dealing with missing soldiers. The firings and suspensions announced on Tuesday include Major Generals Scott Eflant and Jeffrey Broadwater. Deutsche Well Report. AstraZeneca COVID vaccine shows positive results in Lancet study. The late-stage clinical trials were carried out in the United Kingdom. Brazil and South Africa and assessed vaccine safety in 23745 participants, and protection against coronavirus in over 11,600 participants. However, it remains unclear if the results will lead to a green light from regulators in the UK and elsewhere. Mean Pangalos, a research and development head at AstraZeneca, said that the vaccine maker would submit requests for regulatory approval around the world. Fox report. Devil Worshipper, released in 2016 homicide case arrested in shooting death. A man out on bond in a 2016 homicide case that Houston police say involved devil worshipping has been arrested in connection with a murder last month. The November 28 shooting death led to the arrest on a murder charge of Edward O'Neill, 23, Houston police said Tuesday. O'Neill was arrested Monday. Police identified the victim as 39-year-old Derek Mike. O'Neill generated international headlines four years ago when, as an 18-year-old, he was charged with killing his 16-year-old friend during a satanic ritual, KPRC-TV reported. Deutsche Well report. Coronavirus. Lions at Barcelona Zoo contract COVID-19. Four lions at the Barcelona Zoo were infected with the coronavirus, the zoo announced on Tuesday. Three female lions named Zala, Nima and Run Run and a male lion named Kiyumbe were tested after their keepers noticed they showed slight symptoms of coronavirus. Zookeepers administered antigen detection tests and all of them tested positive for SARS-CoV-2. The result and diagnosis were confirmed by subsequent PCR tests. CNN report. 
New Los Angeles DA announces end to cash bail, the death penalty and trying children as adults. Newly elected Los Angeles County District Attorney George Gaskin announced sweeping plans for criminal justice reform as he was sworn into office Monday. Gaskin defeated eight-year incumbent Jackie Lacey as he assumed the head of the largest prosecutor's office in the nation Monday. He said his new agenda for Los Angeles, which includes ending cash bail for certain minor offenses, the death penalty and the practice of charging juveniles as adults, will differ from his predecessors in order to better prevent crime, reduce recidivism, and restore victims. BBC report. Is tried to build pulse jet-powered drones, report. A conflict monitor revealed the engine in a new report about how is obtained and made weapons under its caliphate. Conflict armament research car, said as had, sophisticated production capabilities for improvised weapons. Is was declared territorially defeated in Syria and Iraq in March 2019. From 2014, Is had imposed its brutal rule on millions of people once controlling 88,000 square kilometers 34,000 square miles of territory stretching from western Syria to eastern Iraq. Al Jazeera report. TikTok saga. Second U.S. judge blocks Trump's ban, app in limbo. A United States federal judge has blocked President Donald Trump's attempts to ban TikTok, the latest legal defeat for the administration as it tries to wrest the popular app from its Chinese owners. The Trump administration had tried to ban the short-form video app from smartphone app stores in the U.S. and cut it off from vital technical services. TikTok sued, arguing such actions would violate free speech and due process rights. Fox report. Florida cops seek killers who kidnapped, tortured and executed two truckers. Florida investigators are seeking the killers who kidnapped, tortured, and fatally shot two truckers in Miami-Dade over the weekend. Police said the assailants kidnapped Osmer Oliva, 50, who owned Oliva Delivery Corp., and Johan Gonzalez Quesada, 26, then tied their hands and tortured them for hours in the back of a moving type truck before shooting them in the head and leaving them in a yard in Opalaca, which is near Miami, the Miami Herald reported. Al Jazeera report. Turkey condemns seizure of vessel by East Libyan forces. Turkey has condemned the interception of one of its ships by eastern-based Libyan forces in the Mediterranean Sea, saying it must be allowed to resume its journey while warning of reprisals. Khalifa Haftar's eastern-based Libyan National Army LNA said on Monday it intercepted the Turkish ship Mabroka, under a Jamaican flag, that was heading to the port of Misrata. A Turkish source said on Tuesday the vessel was carrying medicine and medical products. Fox report. How U.S. wasted billions on absurd errors in Afghanistan war. For almost two decades, the U.S. military has siphoned much blood, sweat, and tears into fighting the insurgencies littering Afghanistan. In the coming weeks, the Pentagon plans to accelerate the troop drawdown from 4,500 to 2,500 under orders from President Trump, leaving behind a bleak picture of a struggling country beleaguered by nearly daily attacks, bullet pockmarked buildings and an ailing economy. CNN report. China open to reset in relations with U.S. as Washington announces fresh sanctions over Hong Kong. China's foreign minister says Beijing is open to restarting its relationship with the U.S., declaring the two countries are at a critical historical juncture after a year of escalating tensions. In a video address at the U.S.-China Business Council on Monday, Wang Yi said U.S. policy on China needed to return to objectivity and rationality, according to a transcript published on the Chinese Foreign Ministry website. BBC report. Denmark apologizes to children taken from Greenland in a 1950s social experiment. They were taken to Denmark to be re-educated as Little Danes, who could later return to foster cultural links. But when 16 did return they were put in an orphanage and many did not see their families again. Only six are now alive. One of the children, Helena Thiessen, who told her story to the BBC in 2015, said the apology meant everything. Greenland is now an autonomous territory within the Kingdom of Denmark and relies on Copenhagen for management of currency, foreign relations and defense, as well as the provision of a large annual subsidy. CNN report. Apple's new AirPods Max headphones cost more than an iPhone SE. Apple is expanding its popular AirPods lineup with a pair of very expensive headphones, the company announced Tuesday over the ear headphones called the AirPods Max. They cost $549. By comparison, 
The iPhone SE starts at $399 and the newly launched iPhone 12 is $699. Meanwhile, its basic AirPods cost $199. It's also more expensive than other similar offerings. Bose's noise cancelling headphones 700 cost $339 and Beat Studio 3 cost $349. Thank you for watching 5 p.m. recap. To be notified, you can subscribe our channel and activate the bell. Thank you.